Howdy, y'all. I know there hasn't been too many videos on my channel in a few days, but Happy Halloween, and... Well, Jack Frost is nipping at people's noses. It's snowing, some places, not here. And it is just about time for a big fat man to deliver you gifts. See if I'm up for the job. Hasn't been much on my channel in the last couple months. I've been sick, tonsil problem, and uh, my computer has had a case of the vapors. By the vapors, I mean it's been overheating. Thankfully, for Christmas, I'm getting something that I think will take care of that. But I thought I'd leave this channel with one more project before the year wraps up, which is why I am building a train. Now, I don't know why I'm doing this. I have a strong hatred with train sets. Wait, what's the other word? Um, obsession. So today begins the train build mini series. It's like Hanukkah. Except there's only eight days, there's no candles, and there's no presents, just me building a train. I guess it's nothing like Hanukkah. Never mind. Each day between now and Christmas Eve will be a different part of the build. It'll go something like this. Uh, engine, tender, boxcar, pullman, observation, and then because I hate myself, and there's not a busy time of the year or anything going on, uh, station and custom controller. Christmas Day will be the final showcase video where it'll be going around the tree and I'll do something really cool for that one. So if you really don't want to see it being built, just come back Christmas Day and you can see the final one. And I'm going to take these off because they're starting to get annoying. I will put a link in the description to a playlist that will contain all the videos from this. And I will put a link in the description to my Instagram account, which will have um, pictures. Because that's what Instagram does. Now this train is going to be turn of the century style. It's not a replica of any one train. Rather, it's more a compilation of my favorite turn of the century and late 1800s trains all in one. The reason I'm not buying one, well, there's three. One, they're kind of hard to find. Two... They're kind of expensive and going in the thousands of dollars. Three, most of them are clockwork. Now, it's not that I'm not a fan of clockwork trains uh, or clockwork toys in general. In fact, I have this right here. But, in fact, I think I have, well, I guess that's not really clockwork. That's friction. Um, the problem with clockwork is that if it runs out of spring on the other side of the tree, not that tree, it's a problem. It's too hard to get. I can't really get to the other side of our tree. So it has to be electric. There were some electric ones early on, but most of them are very, very expensive. And the majority of them are larger gauge. I really want an O gauge. That's, that's a better fit for me under the tree, I think. So... That's what I'm going to be building. So if you just want to see the final train running, come back Christmas Day. It'll be up on the channel. And leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell thing as if it does anything. And let's start where all trains start, the engine. So let's say you're as crazy as I am and you want to build a turn-of-the-century style electric train set. Where do you start? Well, I start with the engine. This will be what powers it. Now, I could tell you who manufactured this, when it was made, what train it came off of, but I have no idea. No clue whatsoever. There's no markings on this whatsoever that indicates who made this. I would guess that this is probably from... Hmm. Well, for comparison, 
it's quite similar to this American Flyer, which if my memory serves is from the 1920s. They are semi-similar with how the gearing works. It looks like on this side it would have had exposed pieces, much like this one does. It doesn't have, uh, let's call them see-through wheels. So I'm guessing it's a little bit later than this. Maybe the 1940s or 50s? I, that's sort of a round ballpark. It's appropriate enough for what I'm doing. It's still a very old-fashioned model. It's a very simple model, and I quite like these. Because these are going to be visible on the outside of the train. They look very, very old-fashioned, even more so than anything on the uh, American Flyer over there. So I think it's a good choice. I wouldn't mind having wheels that went all the way through. I could switch them out, but... I don't think I'm going to. This does make them quite a bit stronger. And these wheels are in very good shape. There's no uh, there's no wear and tear, which is really good. Um, they could maybe use some cleaning. Now, the downside is, while I did get this very, very, very cheap, I have no clue if it works. So, let's test this out. This is the controller to my Lionel, the one that normally goes around my Christmas tree. Oh, right there got a little... Okay, well... I saw a little bit there for a second, so... Let's polish this up. I kind of hold these up because um, I don't want them to touch the track and short anything out. Oh, well, okay. All right, well, we have a base. It's a very simple base. There is no, there's no reverse. Don't want one. There's no lights. I could probably rig something up if I really want an electric lamp. Something I'll have to think about as I'm doing this, but for now I'm going to say I'm not going to add one. I'm thinking the starting point of this should be the boiler, the big round thing of a steam engine, and build then the base and then the cab, and then whatever, I'm thinking maybe a little bell or something. This is a uh, old Rayovac Sportsman's flashlight, broken beyond repair, missing parts. And I think God, it should be just about perfect. This would be the front, and this has a uh, thing, this is where a uh, loop went and you could take it out you know put it around your belt or hold on to it hang it up on the wall whatever the case may be and I'm thinking right through there I could run a nice piece of brass that would go to the cab it's a simple way to do it and it might look pretty nice and this unscrewing could help me quite a lot too if I end up adding a light because I'd probably add the light right there so I guess I have to cut this. Now essentially I have to cut this in two ways. It has to be cut this way, however long I see fit. I don't want this train to be as long as a normal train. I, I like the more compact look of the earlier trains and I want the engine to emulate that too. A lot of the early trains, the engines were out of scale with the cars. I don't really like that. So I'm going to try and make it a little bit more in scale with the cars themselves. I don't want the engine to be too much bigger than them. So that that'll be easy. Th cutting it this way will not be.
So now we have the base. I'm quite happy with it actually. Um, I had to bring this kind of down in order to make up for the lip of this, of the uh, boiler formerly known as a flashlight, but I'm really happy with that. I also attached the plow directly rather than making a separate one and attaching it just because it makes it much stronger. I know that with tin plate, with antique tin plate steam engines, one of the things that's often damaged is that. Now, the only steam train I have, despite the fact that I, well, the only uh, electric steam train I have, is the American Flyer that's part of my train table. Um, and this is cast iron. I could probably murder somebody with this. So that's that one's nice and strong as it is. But I wanted to keep this one nice and sturdy, so I just attached it directly. I, uh, I didn't attach it all. I mean, I made it directly onto this. And I made three matching slits in each which I'm I'm quite happy about I think it looks very good it looks very strong it looks very period now you notice in the back here there's this brass piece now this does two jobs it's a coupler for the tender but it does something else as well See if you notice I can pick this up there's no glue or trickery doing that either this holds on a piece back here which then holds this on of course this will have to be attached on at some point I'm not ready for that yet um, I did order a light I ordered a strap-on type Lionel light very early replica type light with an exposed wire which which I quite like it looks period appropriate for what I'm doing I also ordered a small bell and I went ahead and got this, which, when all is said and done, will be our smokestack. This is just a brass tube and a little piece of plumbing. There's this nice little design on the front, too. I might even leave it brass. I'm not sure yet. This I won't leave brass, but I might leave the top brass. The next part will be the cab. That's what I'm going to be working on now. Now, that's going to be tabbed in here. It's going to have little metal tabs on the bottom. They'll go through holes right here and it'll go through and bend. That's how you usually do tin plate. And there we have the cab. Try and get a little closer without knocking anything off. Again, this will be attached at some point, but I'm quite happy with it. 
The roof is on fairly tight. It can be slid off, but I'm not too concerned. I could put a little bit of adhesive on it, but I'm not too worried. You see the brass there. This will stay brass. I'll be uh, taping this off before I paint it so that when I, when it's all done, it will still be brass along with the railing, which I've partially done. I haven't uh, drilled the holes yet for this to go through, but will essentially go somewhere like that. And you see the bottom, you see the little... I got the camera in a kind of weird spot now, okay. Uh, you can see the tabs as they go in. So I am going to start work on the actual pistons, which are probably going to be brass. I haven't picked up the brass for them yet, but I'm thinking it'll come down around here and then loop around. Oop. Try doing that with the, uh, but it'll come down around here, loop around. I'll probably have to cut and grind these off. I don't think that's gonna work with it, but that's okay. That's not too big of an issue. I could even replace this, I guess. Everything else is brass. I mean, there's even a pretty good amount of brass there. Maybe I should just take these off, get some some flat brass to uh, to make new ones. I don't know. I'll have to decide that. It would match a little bit better. So it's something I might do. I'm also going to start work on getting this cut and ready. So we have all of this done now, all of the piston system, I guess you could call it. I went ahead and dr uh, grinded these down, and I'm just going to put in one of the uh, Redline Hot Wheels rivets in once I'm all done. Because like I said, I might paint them. I don't think I'm going to leave them chrome. If, if I don't paint them gold or brass, I might just paint them black. I think that's an appropriate color and it would look good against the red that I'm going to paint the wheels. But uh, I, what I essentially did was flip them over so that this would go up here better. And then I cut and grinded them down to size. I put, well, let me just take this off real quick. It's actually tighter on there now, too, which is really nice. It's kind of a mess of, of solder down here, but, you know, who cares? It's on the bottom. It's grinded down fairly smooth, so it shouldn't look too bad once it's all painted. Um, now, the brass will not be painted. I'm just going to leave that brass. But I initially glued all this on, and then I soldered everything so that it's very strong. There's nothing to worry about there. And this back on. There we go. I made the smokestack, which is again just this piece of little pipe that I made a nice little 
nice little groove to fit on top of the boiler. And I, for now, I've just glued two pieces that will be bent, but I'm going to use a soldering iron to uh, attach them more permanently. And like I said, I got this. I initially was going to go taller, but I just didn't like the way it looked. I just wanted a hair taller than the roof, and, and that's what I ended up getting, so I'm quite happy with how it went. One more thing I might do in between when I get the light in now. I went ahead and traced a little. I'm not sure I'm going to do this or not. I haven't quite decided. Oh, I don't even think you can see it. Um, oh, there you can kind of see it. Um, I traced a little uh, feeding. Uh, what are they called? The the doors to the to the to stoke the fire. I have an engraver. I'm thinking about going in and engraving that and maybe making like a couple of gauges. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to do that or not. It's, it's, I might do that. And if I do, well, you'll see it before I know I'm going to do it right now. So... I would say we are successful. That is not bad. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and solder this on. But in the meantime, and while I'm doing all that, I am going to glue this so that it doesn't turn anymore. Cut the holes for this first. Once this is in, cut the holes for this. I'm not mounting this on yet because I'm thinking just this bottom ring I'm going to leave polished brass. I, I haven't quite decided yet, but that'll go there. I have the bells, as I said, and here's one which I've already kind of broken, but this one, when all is said and done, is going to be the... Uh, steam dome back here which is essentially the valve that controls the steam and my camera is telling me I'm almost out of time which is great great planning um, and then another one will be mounted as an actual bell so I'll go ahead and make some sort well, I got a little spare piece of metal here I'll just make a piece that can go around a little drilled hole and put it right through so once that's all done, assuming it all works, I can actually finally mount this on here permanently. And then I think... I think we'll be about ready, if I'm not mistaken, to paint. Everything is on. Some help from the soldering gun. I'll have to clean all this up a bit. But this is lightly glued on right now. So this is just being held in place. It's all still. It's all weldable still. So JB Weld will actually work quite well. It's why it's what the big reason why I did not uh, use aluminum was because I knew I'd be soldering. That can be problematic. 
and this stuff just doesn't stick to aluminum very well. So, plus it makes it more accurate since that's what the originals would have been anyways. I also drilled the holes for this, so these go through here. Kind of. Wait. Yes. Okay. There we go. And uh, it'll actually be held in place by this little piece here, which I mentioned before. We're pretty much ready to go. Like I said, this is not being attached until after it's painted. I probably should have done the wires already, but the only way I can do them before I paint them is if I either unsolder them from this, which I don't want to do, or if I cut them and then re-splice them, which I don't want to do. So it's going to be a little bit harder to work with the wires, but I think it'll come out with a better result doing it this way. I've also found out that the uh, Hot Wheels rivets won't actually work with these because they're a little bit too small, so I've got to figure out something else to get those back on. But we're not there yet. Let's get this firmly attached. And there we have it, our brand new tin plate steam locomotive. Not too many people ever get to say that, although, uh, was it, MTH does still make replicas of the tin plate stuff. But I am quite happy with the way this turned out. Now, if you are an astute viewer, or not blind, you might notice this isn't black. This is dark blue. I'm a really big fan of the all blue trains, even though they're a little bit modern in terms of what I really like. So I thought, why not have an all blue train, but do it in the steam pattern, meaning like with my other train, you have the engine and the tender dark color, usually black, and then the other cars color matched, which is what you usually see on most old train sets. Only instead of black, I did it in navy blue. And this is navy blue. I know it doesn't, it might not look like it on your screen. It doesn't look like it on my camera screen. But these are both much darker than they actually look right now. So, and uh, this bottom is brilliant blue, which will be the walls of the cars when they're done as well. And then the roof and the floors will be the navy blue to match. And then, of course, the tender will just be navy blue to match this. If you want to see high-res pictures of this, each day I do one, there will be pictures on my Instagram, or if that doesn't work, my Twitter. I'll put a link in the description to both of those. And I will upload as I go. So today... There should be pictures of this taken in high def. Um, I'll make sure to clean off all the uh, fingerprints before I take the pictures. Because right now I can see how many fingerprints are covering this thing. But 
I did clear coat this, which doesn't help with fingerprints. I usually don't clear coat stuff, but because this essentially will sit on a shelf most of the year unused, I thought it best, even if I don't normally do that. I did not clear coat the brass. I, I taped off all the brass, but... And if you liked this, then you should leave a like, subscribe, push that notification bell, and pretend that actually does anything. I think of all the things I've got notification bells on, I get updated from one thing and one thing only. Like once every few months. Honestly, at this point, you're probably better pretending it's not 2018, it's 2008, and just bookmarking the channels you like. <laughs> And checking back from time to time. But there will be other toys on this channel. There will be other DIY, DIY, DIY stuff. Um, back there, there is a humongous steam-powered remote control truck that is just begging to be in a video. At some point, that'll be in a video. And I got tons of other toys. I've got tin toys. I've got... Just a bunch of antique stuff. There's Hot Wheels on the channel. Redline Hot Wheels if you want to check those out. Um, they're sort of res restoration slash history videos, basically. And if, uh, if you like the other stuff, you can check that out, too. I've also got a gaming channel. I'll put a link in the description to all of this stuff, assuming I remember months from now. And I think we're done for this time. Tomorrow will be the tender, so happy trails, happy holidays, and full steam ahead! <laughs> <laughs>